السلام عليكم everyone uh, my name is Dr. Mohamed Al Wasifi assistant professor of psychiatry today we are going to talk about attention and information processing so uh, our objectives today will be uh, discussing the definition of the attention the element of the character characters of attention then we are going to uh, demonstrate the disorders of attention then we give a rapid idea over the information processing model so what is the attention attention meaning to be attentive we have to be fully conscious and we have to maintain this conscious activity over one stimulus and neglecting the other stimuli so this is is the definition of attention we have elements of attention what the element of attention so these elements are selectivity and attraction alternating attention divided attention fluctuation of attention sustainability of attention focused attention and distraction now we are going to discuss one by one What is meaning by selectivity? This is mean that at any moment we can like be attentive to some stimuli and neglecting the other. So why we get attracted to one stimulus? This is because we have the certain factors can be either in us or can be in the stimuli. The external factors is related to the stimuli can be the intensity the stronger is the more attractive repetition of the stimuli when we having a sound repeated many times this is led us to attend to it a changeability when we having a stimulus that is changing uh, this is making us more attractive contrast when we have like a difference between a uh, figure and background uh, difference in color uh, difference like how can we perceive what is the meaning of this uh, uh, of this picture and familiarity like when we have a certain stimuli that is new for us this is making us more attractive to it can be like combination of sensory stimuli like when we have the TV is more attractive than the audio because we have something to see and something to uh, listen combination of factor uh, if we having a certain stimuli having some of these uh, characters like this is making us more attractive the internal factors like uh, it can be this is related to us can be like permanent factors or temporal factors the permanent factors is our intelligence, our sensory fitness, like uh, the sensory organs, like our ears, our eyes, uh, how we smell, or a lasting specific factor, like it can be like a habit of perfection in the attention. This is like some people we call like excellent observers. Temporal factors can be like uh, our physical state. Um, like if we are having any illness or emotional state if we are de depressed or, or we are anxious this is affecting our attention our set this is like that sometimes we are preparing ourselves to perceive something so uh, this our preparation making us like affected how can we see or how can we perceive the stimuli We have altering attention. This is meaning the attention can be shifting from one stimuli to another. Why this happens? This is normally uh, and because of the spontaneity, the attention shift spontaneously after a period of focusing on one stimuli, exploring all the time we want to see something new, we want to explore the whole perception. So uh, usually we try to uh, see like the different part and to combining them monotony is like 
if we giving the same attention or attention to the same stimuli after some time we find us that we uh, we try to shift to another if you are fatigued this is uh, like uh, making us like our attention decrease with time satisfaction if we are already doing something that we already like um, satisfied from doing this this is can inhibiting us from continuing doing it divided attention is like the good example for this that we can keep doing uh, two stuff together like we can drive the car while we are listening to uh, the radio uh, fluctuation like um, the amount of attention can be like uh, increased or decreased rather than even we mentioned before that we can shift from one stimulus to another stimulus this is the difference here we are talking about the amount before we are talking about shifting like from one stimulus to another focused attention is the ability to respond and see the important element of a figure of attention from the ground of uh, background of external and internal stimuli so uh, in order to keep like your attention towards a central, a central uh, certain stimuli this is like what we call like focused attention and this is of course required to be uh, concentrated to be active to be interested in this stimulus sustainability sustainability meaning this is like the contrary to shifting and distraction this is referred to the ability to maintain a constant behavioral response during continuous and repetitive activity so this is mean that in spite we are doing the same activity we are keeping our attention sustained or maintained during this activity what making this sustainability happen if we are interested if we are having curiosity if we are concerned by the point of praise or reward and punishment if we feel that if we continue doing this we can be uh, rewarded for a certain gift we can get a good mark we uh, uh, we can have like uh, a certain appraisal from uh, our uh, teacher we can get a good mark and at the same time we want to avoid to be punished to be blamed to uh, prevent it from something we like so what can keep us sustained in doing the same is like to be interested to having curiosity about to know more and uh, the concept of uh, punishment and reward or praise the distraction this is a negative aspect of attention and uh, in order to uh, decrease this distraction we have to eliminating the distracting stimuli so uh, for example if we are studying we can turning off the radio uh, doing extra effort to keep your attention we have something we call negative adaptation this is like for some people who live beside um, a train station like uh, this uh, like uh, the noise of the train is like become for them like uh, something they are already habituated to uh, to it so they are not attentive to that so this is what we call the negative adaptation so in order to eliminate the distraction we have to try to focus in, in one line neglecting the other we have to make extra effort some of uh, of this uh, of to eliminate the distraction what uh, what we already mentioned the negative adaptation what are the types of attention we have the active attention this is the type where we consciously 
direct and sustained our attention. How can we test this if I put like uh, a diagram with multiple letters and I move the letters forward and backward? You can, how many letters you get it uh, while I put this picture? How many letters while, uh, how can you um, make it forward or backward? Or we can do what we call digital subtraction test. I can ask you 100 minus 7, so it is 93 minus 7, so it can be 86 minus 7. So like this is mean that we are actively attention. Passive attention is this type where the stimuli reaching us without making an effort. So while you are sitting in the lecture, you uh, you listen or you hear something outside like certain noise this is you don't pay this is not your active attention this is the passive attention but at the same time you are focusing to uh, uh, the teacher so this is like the active attention and the noise that you hear is the passive attention So for the physiology of attention, we having the reticular activating system in the cortical arousal, subcortical and the limbic system structure, regulating the information, the posterior parietal loop system in focusing conscious attention. What explain this that if we have lesion in the associative cortical areas, uh, it can result in distractibility in the prefrontal. And if we have lesion in the body to occipital, it can cause what we call perceptual revelry. Revelry occurs when the two stimuli that can't be fused are presented to either eye, or like when we're having a certain stimuli that can have different interpretation. And this is usually seen in a uh, picture that some people can be received in certain way, the others can see in certain other ways. How can we test the attention, the active attention, like the test of immediate memory? You can do three object recall tests, uh, like we uh, say three words, and then we ask the person. Uh, uh, to uh, remember them again. The passive attention is can be measured during the interview. Its orders of attention can be hyperposkia uh, if it means that the attention is heightened and is paid in the details of the stimulus. It can be seen in hypomania and obsessions. In attention, this is can be happened like if we have uh, problems in the conscious level that like uh, stupor or coma or in some psychiatric disorders like in depression and in schizophrenia. The difference between stupor and coma in that the stupor the patient can respond or can be aroused by uh, such stimuli. In uh, coma the patient it's usually difficult to be aroused from this. Distractibility this is seen in many uh, disorders like in the anxiety and attention deficit hyperactive disorder. Either in children or adults, they have a problem to keep their attention. Sometimes also in mania, they uh, can be feeling that they have like uh, a marked increase in attention, but it is uh, or it can be a uh, distractibility. So they can, in mania or hypomania, they can be either uh, distracted or they can be having hyperboscia. Okay, so now we are going to discuss the information processing. What is the information processing? This information processing dealing with information like we consider it like um, our brain is like um, like a computer, so we having input, we have to uh, process it in like um, in the CPU, and we have to put it in a hard drive uh, that uh, we uh, can use it again. So in order to notice 
we have to see the following. So we're having input, like this is can be the stimuli that we're having around us. It can be visual auditory stimuli. We have to give a meaning for this. Then we, after this, we have uh, to uh, processing, like making this information from just like a visual auditory information to be uh, stored for certain time can be like for second several seconds up to minute if we need to storage for a long time we have to put it in the long term memory then uh, we can use it the information in the long term memory by either recall recognition of it like that. let's like make this clear more so this like the input from outside like either visual or auditory we have to give information for this in order to if i have a lot uh, of stimuli either uh, visual or auditory stimuli i need to select what i need to focus on this so in order to make this we have the selective attention so after this i have to put them in the short term memory or it's called working memory so the working memory is a type of short-term memory that I can use either like um, a mini type uh, like that like uh, vision and auditory at the same time. So the short-term memory is like uh, this is um, keeping for short time like can be several seconds up to minute but the long-term memory this is the large capacity that can keep all of this information permanent so this is the fairest uh, i have to tell you so i have input from outside something like certain stimuli by vision or by uh, auditory i can give uh, like uh, information like something is like uh, rounded or something like looks like this what i have to interpret it so i give them the code then while the selective attention to some of them I focused then I put them in short-term memory it's like uh, this is the processor of this is like our CPU then we have to put in the hard drive this is like the long-term memory the next step I have this information already storage I need to use them so I can like uh, how can I test that it's already storage by recall recall like uh, when you have a written exam this is what we call recall recognition when we having like in practical exam when you see uh, like uh, agile for anatomy you can recognize this is this nerve this is this is artery and uh, this information can facilitate the relearning later the executive function this is part of cognitive function responsible for planning and performing each step of this information processing so simply so the information processing how we can give meaning for certain stimuli so sensory memory short term long term memory then how can we use this information long term memory how can we uh, use this either so recall or recognition or relearning one of the important function to do this that we should having the executive functions of the brain while the executive means that the this part of cognitive functions that able to planning and performing each step of this information processing we can process this like uh, the process of memory, like process of registration, retention, retrieval. So uh, this is uh, I explain, but I make it just more clear for you. So we have the sensory memory, certain stimuli. So the selective attention we put in the short term memory, then the long term memory. Long term we have to retrieval. So the types of memory, the sensory memory, refers to the initial momentary recording of information. Iconic, this is referred to what we hear. Echoic, this is referred to like what we uh, hear. So types of memory, this is a continuation. We have the short-term memory, the ability.
to contain this information for short time, uh, like second to minutes. The long term, we it refers to the system in the brain that we can store a long time of a large time of info, a large amount of information over a long period of time. We have two types of long term memory: explicit or implicit. Uh, explicit, like we have two types, episodic. This is like the memory for the daily event, like what did you eat for breakfast. The semantic, it is like uh, the memory for uh, like long term information, like when I ask you where did you born, when did you born. Uh, like the implicit memory, this is the memory for the skills we have learned, like the driving, uh, the bicycle. So usually in uh, dementia or in Alzheimer's disease, what is affected early is the episodic memory while the other types of memory is kept like uh, until the late stage of the disorder so if we have something we have to learn that the episodic is the one that early affected in alzheimer disease or in dementia while the semantic or implicit they kept for over long time of period Thank you very much. I hope that you uh, enjoy this lecture. And if you have any questions, uh, please send me an email. Thank you.